One of the limitations of the STM32 microcontrollers is that not every pin can be assigned to any function. Yes, of course, any GPIO pin can be used as the input or an output. You can set it to either high or low or check if the value on the pin is high or low. But it does not mean that this pin can be used as the serial port, I2C or SPI. More than that, even if one pin can be used as the TX line for the UI, UART1, it doesn't mean that can be a TX for any other UART. The same applies to timers, DMAs, SPI, I2Cs and any other peripheral that can be located in the STM32 microcontroller. Why? Because it's cheaper and simpler not to have the full I.O. matrix on the MCU. Internally routing every pin to every possible peripheral would mean that the chip would be much bigger, much complicated and as the result just much more expensive. So yes, it's a limitation, but if you play it right, it's not that big of a deal. Of course, as long as you know what you are doing and you check the documentation. And by the way, yeah, developers usually do not read the documentation. I know it, because I usually don't. Let's take a look at the pin PB0. According to the documentation, the PB0 can be used as timer 1, channel 2, N, timer 3, channel 3, timer 8, channel 2N, serial port 4, CTS line, OTG HS ULPI D1 and event out. At the same time, the GPIO PB1, same port, next pin, can be used together with timer 1, channel 3N, timer 3, channel 4, timer 8, channel 3N and OTG HS ULPA D2. Two, no assignment to any serial port at all. And those are all the functions those pins can be assigned to. Those, only those and only one at a time. PB0 can be assigned only to those timers and those channels. And there is no chance in hell that STM32 PB0 will work as the SPI or I2C bus. Just never gonna happen. On the other hand, if we take a look at the PB6, it turns out that on the STM32 F722, the PB6 can be used as Timer 4 Channel 1, I2C1 SCL, USART1 TX, Quads P BK1 NCS or FMC SDNE1. So you have a choice, either a timer, either I2C or either a serial port 1. In the STM32 nomenclature, those assignments are called the alternate functions. And each pin, each GPIO can have up to 16 different alternate functions, from AF0 to AF15. What's very important, not every alternate functions might be assigned to every pin. Some pins might have more alternate functions, some pins might have less alternate functions, and the number of the alternate functions available for every pin might vary. How to check which pin can do what? Well, the answer is pretty simple. It's the datasheet. Luckily, the ST provides the full datasheet for every one of its MCUs, so the only thing that you really have to do is to use Google, type, for example, STM32F722 datasheet and go download the PDF and store it locally. It's kinda useful file after all. And then just either scroll it to the table that describes all the alternate functions or use the search function. This is why the MCU datasheet and correctly planning the I.O. matrix of your next build is a must. Before you begin programming and laying down hardware, check which pins can be used to do what and if you will not have any conflicts. Because if you will have any conflicts, well, you might have to start all over again. In the meantime, here's the next video you should watch. I'm Paweł Spychalski, thank you very much for watching and like always, happy coding!